Hey everybody, I hope you're all having a great day so far. Wow, it's a pretty, um, really crazy day here in Houston. It's like almost, let's see, I think it was 22 degrees, which is super cold for here. And also we got like half an inch of snow. I don't even remember the last time that happened. So needless to say, pretty much the whole city has shut down, which I'm sure is very funny to those people that live up north, but here in Texas, and any snow is cause for a whole the whole city to come to a grinding halt. But that's the great thing about Twitch is that I can do it from my home office. So yeah, that's where I am right now. And today we'll be doing some more um, brain generation. Um, we almost are done with margins and color blending. We just need to update the terrain mesh for the new margin pattern. Um, where was I before? Some of the stuff... I guess I was right in the middle of it. Go okay, on... Um, what is this? Figure corners. I don't think we need that function anymore if I remember correctly. Basically, we want to get the neighbor for side, and then the margin corners are halfway between the two points. Oh, right, and the easy thing about the collision mesh is that every hexagon is going to need um, um, margins on every side because the selection um, area will be halfway into the margin towards the other um, hexagon. So we don't have to do anything like we did for the graphics mesh where we only made certain indexes or certain sides at certain times. That is a little simpler. Okay, so let's just get started on that. Uh, let's see here. Right, so... So, um, cell dot, that's differently actually. I don't think we'll need the neighbor cell index at all. So we want the point. Okay, let's forgot to load up my diagram. I'm just, Inkscape can take a while to load, so I'll go ahead and start that right away. So basically, uh, we need to get the halfway point between the two corners and create a new quad there. Slightly different, works slightly differently here. Okay, now that's loaded up. So like for side zero, we'd want to get... Okay, so we kind of did this before. It's the opposite one and then one more clockwise. That's plus four. And the cool thing is also here we don't care about the vertices storage, which we need to know for the vertices indexes because we're just going to be connecting to... Oh, actually, wait. do need to know that because if the neighbor has already been generated, then we'd want to um, use its own already made vertex instead of adding a new one. So let's see. The easiest way to do it, besides trying to get fancy, would be just to check to see if it exists yet. I guess, um, probably what I'll do. Okay, so it'd be 
So, hurts. Uh, neighbor. Storage is. Uh, of courtesy. Safe. Get. Okay, I guess we do actually need the neighbor index. Okay, in the safe get, that it, this means that if the list does not contain, like if it's too small for this index, it will just return null instead of throwing an error. That's all that that function does. Okay, um, what else? I guess... Let's just go with my point A and B again. So my point A is, um... We already have, um, we've created all my hexagon vertices. By uh, they're in the storage. This is storage corners I, and then my point B is storage corners. Then we gotta do another modulo, so I plus one mod six. And those are already created because they're at these points here, and so now. So for the collision mesh, we actually want to get some point in the middle here. Well, this just for um, uh, or demonstration, I'll just go ahead and create these. edge between them. Alright, that's close enough. So we want to get this point here, which is halfway between them, but if this neighbor already exists, then we don't want to create a new vertex. We just want to use reuse that vertex. So, okay, so we're gonna need to number them as well. Make another layer. So this will just be base guns, and we'll make another layer which will have the um, uh. Collision. Uh, half. I don't know what to call it. We'll just this will just be for the collision mesh, and it will contain um, these points I'm going to create. Let's uh, cut these out of the base layer and then add them to the collision layer. Good enough. Now if I lock this and hide it, yeah, this is the only thing that we can type on. So this point will be zero. Let's make it smaller. And I won't worry about trying all the little circles because what we really need right now is just the numbers. Let me visualize what's going on. And also, there'll need to be like a small triangle here. How will that work? Because this is like a three point, so there actually will be one more point here in the middle. It'll be like a 
Yeah, okay. I'll need to add also. Go ahead and create this. I guess the question is now, how do I want to index them? Do I want to do something? I just go clockwise from here and go around. Probably okay. That's not gonna work. I was hoping that if I just type the number, it would show up. I've got double click. So before I go any further, let's see if we can figure out a way to convert. So this point is its corresponding edge it has point zero, one, and two, and so all it is is really just this number multiplied by three. This would have six, seven, eight. That that works. I just wanted to make sure that um, there's an easy way to convert between the two types of points. One kind of strange thing is that this corner up here is not number one, it's actually number 17, but... Um, I think that's the easiest way to do it, just because when we created this triangle before, it was the one clockwise from the edge. So I think I'll just want to follow that pattern. That means, yeah, there should be three times six sides, and that's 18. Okay, so we need to move this up to 18 because I forgot about this triangle or the this one right here. That means got like this. And then over here, this will actually be two triangles as well. So this whole thing will be four triangles. And we'll want to make them no matter what. The only question will be what um I'm gonna click on. So what happened to the it That was weird. So the only question will be if this hexagon has already made this vertex then we want to just use the same vertex index in our triangle instead of creating a whole new one. That's what we'll have this neighbor storage for. All right. Um. Oh, one second. Sorry about that. Um, okay, back to this. So my points A and B is all we'll need. But then for the outer side, we'll want four points, even at because yeah, we'll always want to make this triangle. Sound is dead. 
Damn, I was liking that song too. Okay, so let's go ahead. One complicated thing is this one could also have been created by this neighbor because it's, a, again, a three-point um, corner that's shared. So I'm trying to... I mean, there's two ways we could do it. Because, I mean, it's always going to be obvious which ones have been created if we track them, but I think... I mean, it's probably just as fast and also a little less prone to bugs if we just check to see if that hexagon's been created already instead of trying to predict which ones have been made. Basically, we need um, for point A, for point B, We also need this one, so this one will definitely could have been created by here, so let's see. What should I call them? I guess I'll just call it tri point. And then tri point clockwise or something. Like that. And this probably shouldn't even be points, I should name it, I really need to factor, to be vertice instead of a point. Light difference, a point would, to me would be the actual position, whereas a vertice is the index. Okay, so... If... Neighbor storage is null. That means that cell has not been created yet, so we need to create well, at least some of these vertices. Definitely. Oh, well, wait. This point could have been created by this counterclockwise neighbor. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, no. Because this counterclockwise neighbor would have gone here, here, and here. Yeah, so the only one that can be a, have been created by three is just the center point. I guess we'll also need the clockwise neighbor. So I'll just call this clockwise cell index. is cells, neighbor cells, i plus one, odd six, and again here it's just this neighbor, because this neighbor could have created these two points. And then we'll want also, I don't know if we need this neighbor cell. Oh, uh, well, we do because we need to get the um, positions of the vertices if we have to create new ones. So, so let's clockwise cell equals. Clockwise cell index. And finally, the cell vertices. Which. If, oops, that didn't work. I did a capital R. It decided I wanted the capital version. If get actually clockwise cell index. Okay, so these two points. Uh, and maybe this one are given by this hexagon, and then the this one, and maybe this one are given by this hexagon. Okay, 
though. Okay, this means we gotta make our own, so add vertex. This would be my blueprint. Uh, we have my own. Oh yeah, it's just cell corner points. I plus neighbor cell corner points. I plus four. Mod six. We want the average of those. So I need to um, add parentheses there. So just to make sure, I want zero, and then it has to loop around four. That's fine. And then neighbor vertices B is the same thing. Except these indexes here are different. So this is I plus one. And then this one is just plus three. Okay, and so. I'll come back to this center point because I need to figure out exactly how to do it. So if the clockwise storage is null. Maybe instead of. Yeah, because one thing is we have to store these also in our own version of the margin corners. It's because we'll reuse some of these as well. So we also got to check the if this has been created already. Well, I guess we would have known that this point is the only one that's shared between sides, and it would have been created only if side is greater than zero. And this one. If the side is the last one, then also we'd share it. I'm glad I caught that. Let's get rid of all that. Okay, so again, this one we only need to create If I go to zero, that means that, because yeah, any other time, this point or this point would have been created by the previous iteration of the loop. So we only have to worry about that first position right now. I'm just going to do a uh, margin corner start is i times 3, just so I don't have to do that a bunch of times. If neighbor storage is null, then margin corner start is this one. Or, uh, the storage margin corners corner start. Okay. And then anytime we need to make this one, because this is like the forward. That would be right here, and that would be margin corner start plus one. This one is a little more confusing because it could have been made by a bunch of different hexagons, so got to check. First of all, if the neighbor has created it, we can just use that. And then if not, we check this one, then we can reuse that. If not, we create it ourselves as an average of 
gets three points. Oh, which... This way, the storage, margin corner, walls, then neighbor storage. What would this be? So it starts here, so that's side plus four. So it's basically the same as this, except we need to multiply it by 3 at the end. Oh. The yeah, parenthesis right there. So again, we're taking... We want to transform from our corner to the, our neighbor's corner. And then one more clockwise, so that's... We rotate four around and then this margin corner right here is just this index times three. So let's see, here it would be. What was this? Oh, yeah, sorry, here would be 12, which is right. Although, I guess we actually want this one. Yeah, so we actually don't want this one, so I need to remember that. That would be 12, right? So we would be getting this one right now. We actually want this. So I guess we subtract by 2 to get the counterclockwise most on that triangle. Okay, yeah, these indexes are getting a little confused, aren't they? It was pretty simple when we had 3, but now that we've got more... I don't really know a better way to store these, so I think I'm just going to stick with it. And with our little diagram, not too confusing. I keep on clicking the wrong window, so I'm going to rearrange those right there. And then down here, I'm going to do the same thing. Hey Ice Boy, yeah, programming is a lot of math actually. And then to this, I actually want this point here. So if we go down to three, this is simple, it's just three times three. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so now we're to the confused part. Oh good, it's good that you like math. When I was in high school, I hated it, but I think a lot of the problem is just that in a lot of classes they just make you do a ton of math and you have to just memorize everything and they don't actually tell you how it's useful. I've come to like it more now. Okay, so if the neighbor storage is null, then we want to also see if the clockwise storage is null. And if both are null, then we'll make this point ourselves. Which would be add vertex rearrange this a bit ours and then the neighbor plus the clockwise l first of all is this the right point that's the one opposite the one we're past so three and then here we need to actually rotate around five times, which is the same as just going clockwise one. Plus five, odd six. Okay, and I, of course, take the average of three points, we have to divide by three. 
That's it. Okay, and then if the clockwise storage is not null, then that means we can just take the vertex index from that. So what would that be? Again, we rotate around, and then we want to move one more. So again, if we move over here to where I've actually numbered the vertices, if we rotate around and then multiply by three, it gives us... Oh, wait, I did it wrong again. So if we rotate around, multiply by three, it gives us this point, which is 15. But we actually want 14, so we need to subtract by one. Which I just remembered subtracting... Not... Doesn't always work well in modulo, so I should change this to um, that of subtracting by two. I should just go to the previous um, side, which would be here. Then we would get nine, and I want this one, so I just add one. I need to take another modulo. Okay, this is getting a little too. Let's see. My corner start. Let's just go ahead and create all these. Uh, oh no, that's not going to be much help because we're going to be going to different corners at different times. So I guess we could just use four, it's five. I don't know, it doesn't really make much difference though. This will be... That. So, okay, that's gonna give us three and we're looking for this point. So I think I will just go ahead and go up to four just to be easy. Then we'll take that. I guess I can go ahead and multiply this by three. There's... Now what we're going to have to do... So we're at this one, which times three would give us this corner, but we have to rotate backwards twice, so we need to subtract twice. Another way to do that is add 16 and then modulo. Um, let's see. But to make this a little more easy to understand, I'm just going to do it like that. And the reason that you have to... Um, add the 18 is because negative numbers with modulo, they still work fine, but not the way we'd want. Kind of hard to explain. Um, this is Unity? Yeah, that's... I'm working in Unity. This is just C-sharp, though, of course. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. But I caught these bugs. Corner start again is I plus three odd six times three. And okay, so here we just want that corner, right? So we're looking for this point, which is just the corner opposite, which is the corner plus three. And, uh, so we multiply by three. Okay, so we want this one, and then if we move over here where I've labeled everything, this three would be nine. So yeah, that's right. Simple one. And then down here, we want to get this point. So again, we want to, except we're doing it on this side, so at five, 
Still get that, so I'll need to subtract by one. Alright, that's where I noticed this error. I'll just copy this. We actually need to add five. And then here on the corner start, we will again. Corner start minus one plus 18. Mod 18. Now we just have one more case. Uh, we actually have to do that last point, I forgot, but. Where? I had to do this, except with just the neighbor. And we want this corner, and it's the point opposite. So it's basically the same as we did before, except. Um. We will only rotate three instead of five, because we want eight, so it's three. Or three times three minus one. Okay, and then the last point right here, we only need if the side is not the last side, because if it's the last side, we've already added that vertex. So if i does not equal 5... So... We need to get the average of those two points if we have to create it ourselves. And it would only be the clockwise neighbor that would have this. So if clockwise storage is null, then we'll add it ourselves. Plus three. Also, I need to change all these to plus two. So, yeah, it's our side plus one, and then the other one, neighbor, the opposite, so plus three. Good, good. That one's all taken care of. Wait, is that right, though? Oh, not the neighbor. It should be the clockwise. So, that should be the clockwise plus five. All right. And then the last case, another one where we have vertex shared, so we've got to deal with that. And this time we just need this one, which is just five. I think, oh no, we've got to subtract by two, so it's not full. Cool. So I plus five. And then we subtract by 2 to get this 13 point, which again, if we just move over here to where I've labeled, we can see we actually want this point right there. Okay, so I think that's everything. So now we have all the points figured out, and we can finally add the triangles. And there will be four... Um, and of course they all need to be clockwise, so I'm going to look here, start here, then we can just do there, there, there. That would be bridge, corners, I, and then storage, margin corner, margin corner start. Storage corners i plus one mod six. And then since we're working with the collision, we need to pass our board index, which we already have that. That tells the game which block this triangle belongs to. And now we just do this for all the other ones. I took care of this triangle. 
And now this triangle will start... I guess we can start here, it doesn't matter. So it starts at... Go here. Plus one, mod six, and then... That's margin start. Then we need to add one, and for the margins we have to mod 18, of course. There's a... I'll just do margin I. Just shorten that a little bit. And for this triangle, we start here, and then, again, we just increment the margin one time. I'll actually copy this because more like that. That's plus one, and the next one's plus two. And then the next triangle is the same thing, except plus two and three. I think we're finished with this big long to code. I can't really think of a way to simplify it because there's a bunch of different edge cases. The all right, I can get rid of all this code because we don't need it. That was for our old flat cliffs, which we're not using anymore. But I think I might actually might be better to pull this out. I'll leave it for now, it's not a huge deal. It's still a few bugs here. Oh yeah, the surface just doesn't count anymore, and then we need to pass the blueprint. actually don't even need that surface class anymore. I'll go ahead and delete it just to keep things um, ID. Alright, so I'm just going to let it pile real quick and we'll try it. Oh no, still something... Okay, I haven't gotten rid of all references to that. Okay. Trying to trigger <laughs> marathon on the radio, it seems like. I hope that's everything. So, compiling. Okay, I think that's good to go. Got an error. Index out of range. Thing here. Oh, yeah, I'm still using the corners array. This In these places, it should be the margin corner. Let's, um... How many years have I done game development and coding? Um, let me see. When did I start? Well, I've been doing game development probably... about... 13 years, and I started programming maybe 11 years ago, because at first I didn't really do any programming, so not set to it. Oh right, so this is not the clockwise, this should be just the neighbor storage. Yeah. OK. 
her. There's some ways you can get the game to recompile without having to exit the editor, but I've never got that to work. Okay, so now it seems to be picking. You can see down here in the log that it's changing blocks whenever I mouse over it. Let's, we can look at the collision mesh. Okay, so something is not right. That is a little strange. I'm trying to see if I can tell where the problem happens. And why they all move up to this corner. That's too hard to read what's going on. Let's um, just have it create first row, maybe. Maybe even just the first. So if i is greater than zero, break. This is a bad code, but we're just testing right now. Now if we look at the collision mesh. A little strange, it didn't create anything it looks like. Yeah, it has no vertices. Oh, because yeah, the first index in the blueprint is actually out of bounds. So I'll just do it like this. It'll just create one cell and then exit. Hopefully this one will give me an idea of what's going on. Okay. Yeah, there's some crisscross which is not good. I'm going to turn off the visible mesh, and maybe we can get a better idea of what's going on. Okay, so it's these triangles. Uh, they're like all winding around the wrong sides. Alright, they're all triangles, but it's these small ones, I think, which are the problem. Okay, um, so these two, I'm just going to comment them out and s see if the other ones are working right. I find the best way when you're working with creating a mesh and programming to try to debug is to just try and create as little geometry as you can at first and see if that works. And then move from there. Oh, okay, so it wasn't actually the small triangles. Well, they might be bugged too, but something else is still messed up. So again, let's move just this first triangle and see what that looks like. Alright, so we see something was wrong with that first triangle actually. Like, yeah, it should just be connecting here, but it actually goes and connects. What do you, the triangles are doing? Yeah, it goes like out here and then around this weird. In fact, I'm going to make sure that just the normal hexagon without the margins is being created okay.
That looks like a shape wrong. Yeah, that's not a hexagon. What is going on there? Seems like they all match match up except for this point. All I'm doing is just copying the corner points from here. That means something, but that can't be wrong because... Oh, I'm not looping. Okay. What I mean is I'm not using the modulo here, so it's like jumping to later. Why is it? Wait, I don't need to loop because I only go to the floor. Oh yeah, I do, because this is plus two. I'm surprised, like, I don't know why it's not giving me an out-of-bounds error, actually. It should be six, so when I... And this should be I... Well, I guess it would not give me, because it would have been five. Five plus two is five. I don't need to look here. So that's not the issue, is it? Okay, um, again, I'm gonna go one triangle at a time here and see what's going on. So I was going to say that the point might just be wrong in the blueprint, but then the graphics mesh would also be distorted. Because they both use the same thing and they're obviously not matching up is the whole issue. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the wireframe on the there so we can see the collision mesh is highlighted. It's a little difficult just because of the green color. But it matches up. That's not it. I think it's the last triangle that's messing up, so I'm going to do everyone besides that. Okay, is this right? Yeah. So for some reason when it comes here it like overshoots. Make much sense. Oh I'm not using the add vertice function. I think that might be the issue. Could be the issue, I don't know. Okay, so let's do that and hopefully that will fix that problem. That could have been the whole problem that we're having because the vertex index is getting um um the word out of sync. Yeah, so now it's fine. Now uh, let's just add in one triangle, see what's going on with that. Okay, so now this side is fine, so was that the whole issue? 
And we can see that it matches up exactly, goes halfway down the triangle, or halfway down this triangle. So the next one should fill out this rectangle. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Toy shoes. Now oh, this one. Good. Okay, so I don't know why this last one would <laughs> cause an issue, but let's make sure. Yeah, it looks good. So now we know we have a perfect hexagon. And let's, um, points does it have? 24. That should be right because it should be 6 times 4. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that we didn't have any extra vertices, but everything looks good. If I, it tells me I have block 0 when I hover over. The one way that we could optimize this to make there be even less um, points is if certain places like here are flat so like these this point could just go all the way out there but it's kind of I don't know I mean it would be optimized especially for these flat areas but I don't know it's, it's a lot of work and I think it would open us up for bugs so I'm gonna wait to implement that if I ever do Okay, so now we know one cell works. Let's just see if all of them work. Um, if not, then we'll go and just do one row or something. Okay, all of them do not work. Wait, that they like default to here. Is this like. I don't know if this point is zero, zero, zero or something. I think it's just always one on E. Like this and I don't know. I guess uh, when we believe when we have some more, we'll be able to see what's going on. Let's see. Got to skip. Do the second row, but I don't feel like doing the math right now, so I'm just going to do something hacky. Test i equals zero. Then if test i is greater than one, we'll break. All right, let's make this even more explicit. If it's greater than or equal to two, we'll break, because we only want to create two cells. again go okay so seems like only a few corners are doing it and I wonder It's because they're like the modulo is bringing it to the wrong side. Let's see. I think this is zero. So this is specifically why this corner would be messing up. 
Oh, because of these ones. Yeah, because it knows that this vertex has been created already, so yeah, my math there is wrong. It's trying to share, but maybe it doesn't get set up correctly. Okay, well this should be three. Is that the whole issue? Could be. Try that. That's not the, or was that the whole issue? Yeah, I think it's working fine now. Looks like everything set up weird. I don't see any weird edges. I go flat, nothing like out of plane. Okay, so let's test some more. I just removed this code. Hopefully, we won't have any more weird. Triangles like that. Okay. okay, I think we're all set to go. See anything out of the ordinary, and then if I mouse around, will it let me select stuff? That looks good. And this illustrates some of the issues that I was wondering about when we were trying to show blocks underneath, because we'd have to make this really complicated. We'd have to a bunch more edges there. I'm not I still don't know how I want to handle that, um, but I'll wait. I don't know. You don't mind can you tell me about what a game document is you mean like a design document uh, it's basically just a, a really big document that you write down pretty much everything about a game like uh, the gameplay all the content you want um, your target audience um, how much money you'll make the marketing plan pretty much anything you need to know about a game and the reason is mostly just for a, a large team, um, so everybody's on the same track. So if you're a small developer, or <laughs> doing something just for fun like I am, it's not super worth it to have a huge design document, but it can help you flesh out design of your game, so a lot of times I do go ahead and write at least part of it, just for myself. That um, answers your question, but if you want any more info just or anything more specific, feel free to ask. Okay, I was just looking. I think we're good to go. No problem, Ice Boy. Alright, so we're done with the margins. That took most of the stream. I think we can maybe start on the subdivision. And basically, um, and lately Unity actually like increased the amount of vertices you can have in one mesh. So I'm not sure if this is actually an issue for us right now. So let's say if we had a map that was like 50 by 50, um, it would be difficult to have that all in one mesh. The, um, Go ahead and see if Unity would throw an error if I did that. 
So we set dimensions 50 by 50 by. Oh, the heights doesn't matter. Alright, so let's see what happens. It'll take a long time for it to load, of course, but. Oh, it actually didn't take that long at all. Okay, so we have a huge map. But it's not really causing any issues because it's pretty simple. We go to the visible mesh, it should have slightly more vertices. Um, I want the actual mesh. Yeah, so we have 63,000 vertices. I think this would have been too large until this update. Um, that's... Yeah, we still have a ton of frames per second. And it's drawing over 300,000 vertices. Vision Mesh, we have yeah, 35,000 vertices. Are they the same? Those are. Okay, no, the Visible Mesh has about double, I thought. But, um, obviously, right now this is super simple, and this is going to get more complicated. And what I was trying to say is we basically want to ch break this up into something like, I don't know, 8x8 eight eight chunks, and that are each a different model. And I want to go ahead and do that now before we get too much more complicated, because it will change the way some of the logic works. Uh, is Google Docs good? And do I have a template? Yeah, Google Docs is fine for writing a design document, especially if you're going to do a smaller one. I personally um, like to use like uh, a Wikipedia-style document so that you can like link to different pages. You, there's a couple. Um, I, um, there's one called WikidPad or TiddlyWiki if you want to look those up. Um, and I don't have a template just um, offhand, but after my stream, I can uh, link you one real quick. Let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on this. First, we'll need to specify the dimensions of a chunk. And probably just for simplicity, we should make sure that the maps are also like multiples of that chunk size. The first. Um, let's see. Will be, I don't know, my chunk size. Oh, I'll go ahead and type it. It's called Wicked Pad with a D. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. I have it installed right now. But yeah, that's usually what I use for design documents because you can link to different pages really easily, just like a Wikipedia. Or I guess I should say Wiki website. So, I guess the main thing is, just, yeah, the map size needs to be multiple of the chunk size. Let's um, clean this up. So, where do, we want to store this in the metrics class, I guess. But, uh, metrics. Not to capitalize correctly. Okay, I guess instead of map, I'll call this board. That's what we. Other places. Yeah, WikiPad is free, and so is TiddlyWiki.
No problem, Ice Boy. Okay, so now we've got that, and I'll go to organizer here. Basically, the chunk size. I guess it could be small, but that'd be kind of. We should probably have a minimum. Oh, links there twice. Add. Word. Chunk size. I think for now I'll just make sure it's it has to be greater than one. But really, I don't know. You never want this to be less than say eight. But and we also need to test whenever we're doing a map generation that the map is a multiple of the chunk size. Where is that? Map generation. I guess we'll just check at the end. Oh wait, do we? No, I want to try and catch errors as soon as possible. Okay, so we do something like this. If um, columns Modulo. Do I have the database? I don't think so. Build builder. Okay, that's what actually does the work. Not sure exactly why I have them separated out. It doesn't useful but regardless this will need the board metrics I think yeah these classes were the first things I created with um, in the Lua interface, so I think some of it is a little strangely designed. Might have to come back at some point. Got the metrics, chunk size. So if that does not equal zero, then throw an error. Script runtime exception. Um, columns must be. Um, multiple of chunk size. So I'll go ahead and pass that. And I'll do the same thing for the rows. Okay. Um, let's just go ahead and see how that works. So right now, um, I'll just set this back to five by five, and I'll set the chunk size to eight, and it should throw an error because it has to be a multiple of eight. So we need to open up table of contents and. Oh, right here. 
So this is board trunk size. Okay. That was something wrong. Oh, here I need to pass the board metrics. And them columns must be multiple of the chunk size. Okay, that's what we knew would happen. So if I just go back into the map generation and change this to 8x8, and also change this to 8x8, it would be good to go. It loads everything. It's actually pretty big. I wonder if we should make the chunk size smaller, but it doesn't matter a whole lot. Yeah, this is almost probably the, one of the final size of the map. I'll just do... I'll make the chunk size 4. That way we can test just with this relatively small map. That way they'll just be four chunks, which seems like a good combination. Uh, in here. Okay, so... Basically, what we want to happen... is, yeah, we need to create a new mesh object for each chunk. I'm trying to decide the best way to do that. Maybe the best way would be to, I think the easiest way, and we wouldn't really have to change much code since we have that blueprint system. Go back. Where is it? Down here, terrain mesh. It's only we'll to change this to a list of meshes, of course, but then we'll basically just have a new object here. And we call generate a bunch of times. And every time we just create a new blueprint for every chunk. And that way we wouldn't really have to um, update these functions at all, I don't think. Yeah, that's definitely the best way to go. So this needs to be a list, and I guess now we need to have this generate return a mesh instead of just, uh, how do we get the mesh before actually? Oh, uh, we just set it. Um, I guess we'll need to pass it. We can figure that out. So int chunk columns is the database or not database battle word um, row size divided by the database metrics chunk size. And chunk rows is battle board layer size divided by how big? How many columns would there be? I guess that we divide it by the row size. Then we wanted to divide this by the chunk size. Okay, 
and the board size is never going to change. Well, I don't think it really matters if this is a list of meshes or an array, so I'm not going to even put that. Um, instead of doing that, actually, I'll create a public class here. Chunk, and I'll just move this into the chunk. I know I just create one, but there could be more than one. I guess we wouldn't know until we call generate. Just write it. List. Junk. Junks. I'll comment this out because we'll probably reuse it later. Go ahead and do this, I guess. Star. Oh. oh, this is all private. Uh, but in a second. As I didn't clear this already, that could have caused problems. Might not have this chunk, or this chunk class be public, actually. I'll have to see how I want to do that. And, um, so here we want to check to see... Or int column, row column less than, um, Oh, I put an L there. Chunk columns. And for O equals. I kind of like going by the index and then just getting the rows and columns that way. So N. Chunks is just the chunk columns times the chunk rows. So column, let's just call this chunk column is I modulo um, chunk rows and chunk row is i times um, chunk rows. We've done this type of thing all the time. And we just need to move all this into there. So basically, we need to see if we've already created this mesh. So if chunks i. Uh, all right, chunks count. Let's do it this way. If i is greater than or equal to chunks count, then that means we need to add a new mesh. Chunk, add, chunk. I can copy this. Try and copy this code over here. That's not for me. Collision mesh. Pulls. Okay, there we go. And then we've got to make the collision triangles.
can just add an I to it. So they'll each have different names. And now, I guess we can reuse this blueprint builder after all. As well as this. Yeah, can we use all these generator classes? But I'll need to slightly change them so that we actually pass the mesh in instead of setting that variable. I guess how I should actually do this, we want to get chunk. And then we add that to the list. Otherwise, this chunk equals chunks i. First we build and then we need to pass the chunk. Um trying to decide how I should do that. I guess we just pass a start index and then a width and a height maybe. Or it already knows the chunk size, so I could just give it the chunk index and that'll be fine. Here. Need to pass this the blueprint and then also the chunk graphics mesh and the collision gen. Need to pass it the blueprint, the collision mesh, and also um, the triangle owner list. And obviously, these will need to change to actually get it for a specific chunk. Uh, well, that might not exactly work, but... Because we've got to somehow deal with unused chunks. I mean, I don't know exactly how this code will work because really um, the chunks, like the map size never changes mid game, but like if we loaded a, another game, I don't know if this class will have been recreated or not. Um, so I just want to try and be future proof. And we also got to have these. Ask for a chunk index. But I think we're on the right track. And this is barely going to have us need to change these generate functions at all. Everything I'll just change in the blueprint builder. And it's really nice because the generate functions already expect certain um, blocks not to be created because of this. We'll just need to change like the flag that they use to check that from like, I don't know, if it's a border, then it'll know not to create that. But we'll worry about that. Yo, will go ahead and add flag there. So public bool is chunk neighbor. But then I'll know just not to create it. Maybe I'll go ahead and add that so I won't have to worry about it. False. Same with the collision mesh. Okay. Well, we're on the right track. I don't think this will take that long. And then we'll get to something really fun, which I've been wanting to do forever. Height maps and color maps. I'm not sure what order we'll do that. But basically, height maps will let us actually add bumps to 
the hexagons so that they won't just be completely flat. And the color maps will let us add an actual texture so we don't just have gradients. And I think we'll finally start to get um, some nice looking rain, I hope. But yeah, that's it for me for tonight. I hope you've all, um, I wish you all a great night and I hope you've all enjoyed the stream. Thanks for coming by watching and chatting. I do really appreciate it. Um, if you have missed any of the stream or previous ones and you'd like to catch up, I do have a YouTube channel where I will update every or upload everything. Um, I also have a Twitter, which you can follow me there for notifications when I go live, and also, of course, follow me here on Twitch. Um, I also have a Discord server if you'd like to chat with me and other viewers. We'd really love to have you. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, you can get to any of those things by typing exclamation point and then YouTube or Discord and chat, or by looking at my channel or video description. That's it for me for tonight. Again, <laughs> thanks... Thank you all for coming and have a great night. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.